Paul, it's good to be finishing up another year recording strong growth in overseas visitor numbers. But how important and all as that is, is just one side of the business, of course. At a recent industry meeting, you outlined a strategy which focuses on developing four destination brands within the Ireland offer. That's the Wild Atlantic Way, Dublin, the South and the East and the Lakelands. So before we get into each of those, can you share some of the thinking behind this direction? Yeah, sure. Um, look, that session you talked about was really the Fault Ireland team outlining its business development priorities for 2015. Um, and it's against the backdrop, I suppose, where our board has set us, uh, I suppose, an overarching goal for the next number of years of delivering sustained growth and foreign earnings. And to do that, I suppose, you know, the start point has to be, you know, how well are we understanding the markets? You know, as you know, we've been working uh, agencies and industry to really get a handle on all of our core markets. And I suppose the big message coming through there is that while the Ireland brand is in good shape, we're just not different enough or not compelling enough versus our competitors to move people uh, you know, to buy now, get us up their bucket sure. list. Uh, and from our perspective, if we're going to do that, the message seems to be you've got to deliver some big ideas of scale that grabs buyers' attention, consumers' attention, uh, and get active in the marketplace with in, them. Indeed, because they've got lots of alternative destinations, of course, to choose from. Well, if the gathering was the big highlight of 2013, then, then surely the Wild Atlantic Wave was the big story of 2014. But that's a story that's only beginning, really, and there's a great deal more to come. So tell mm. us a little bit about that and your plans. Yeah, well, look, obviously it's very gratifying to, to see the, uh, the positive response to the Wild Atlantic Way, but, I mean, in truth, actually the work on it had begun way before the gathering, uh, you know, so long gestation period and core, I think, to the Wild Atlantic Way working is collaboration. So from our perspective, getting that route sorted, getting the, the nine local authorities along the West Coast working with us, getting communities bought into the route, you know, all of that work needed to be done. We launched in 2014, 2014 I suppose was about taking us from a concept to making it tangible and real and on the ground. So we have a route, it's fully signposted, but that is just the starting point. I mean, I think next year there are 159 discovery points along the Wild Atlantic Way. Each of those now will have unique interpretation panels that tells the story of that place. We also know that consumers, you know, now are they're active on their Facebook accounts and their Twitter accounts. So each site has its own unique photo points. So in a way, we'll just frame the landscape as hero, uh, and then get people sharing on social media their sure. experiences along the Wild Atlantic. Sure. And we have some signature discovery points, uh, four in particular, that we're looking to invest in. That again will become experiences in their own right, increase the dwell time, and get people spending. Um, I suppose another key piece of work is, is uh, overseas and domestic tour ops and travel agents have been telling us that look, they need some help in terms of how do they encourage the consumer to digest the yeah. Wild Atlantic Way. Yeah. So we're breaking the Wild Atlantic Way into six zones mm -hmm. uh, in, in 2015, each with a kind of unique feel or vibe. Yeah. Uh, and we've been working then with local trade clusters uh, you know, to basically develop new experiences that we can start to sell into market, get buyers excited, get consumers excited. Now, non-industry people will surely be surprised to learn that Dublin City is not doing particularly well when compared to other city destinations in Europe. This is all about achieving its potential, isn't it? Tell us something more about that. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, look, in many ways, Dublin's problems are our first world problems. I mean, if you talk to anybody uh, in, in the industry, you know, volumes are high, uh, rate is improving, uh, you know, everybody is seeing the benefit of growth sure. over the last couple of years, but Dublin's problem is, is actually a brand image problem. Mm. Uh, and if that's not tackled now, mm. then I think our, the, the consensus would be that it will come back to bite us in two or three yeah. years' time. Yeah. So, you know, the, the work of the Grow Dublin Task Force and the work indeed that uh, you know, many of us were involved in in terms of the market reviews has shown that the brand image is a bit tired, mm. a bit dusty. Mm. And if we don't reinvent and reinvigorate Dublin, sure. uh, then the ability to sustain that sales growth over time will be compromised. Yeah. So what we're doing now is, I suppose, taking the work that the Grow Dublin Task Force has done, which is about a new proposition for Dublin, which is this notion of a vibrant city on the edge of nature. Mm. Uh, we want to take that and bring it to life as a coherent brand strategy yeah. and a coherent communication strategy overseas so that you know, when Dublin competes, it's not competing at the level of a nation brand, it's sure. competing against other city brands. Yeah. Yeah. And we have got to make sure that Dublin punches out 
uniquely versus its competitive set and that we start to add layers to that Dublin offering so that we can appeal to a wider set of consumers uh, and continue to delight them over yeah. time. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, Fulcher Ireland, you're also at an advanced stage in creating a branded proposition for the East and the South as the most enjoyable place in Europe to experience 5,000 years of ancient history, older than the pyramids. You plan to launch that next year? Yeah, um, we've been working away, no more than the, I suppose, the Wild Atlantic Way. It's a project that you know, has, has a, a gestation period that takes time. Um, sometimes the consumer tells you what you want to hear and sometimes sure. they tell you to go back and try, some, try a little bit harder. So yeah. from our perspective, uh, yeah, we're, we'll be ready to launch in quarter one with a new heritage offering for the South and East Coast. Yeah. What we have in this part of the world versus anywhere else on the island is our absolute density of our built yeah. heritage asset. Yeah. But in many instances, of course, the stories are hidden. Sure. And the job of work now is to stitch a thread through all of that, yeah. create a unified heritage-based offering yeah. Yeah. with strong product clusters that, yeah, I suppose, encourage people to view this as a touring region That's rather right. than a region that you transit through on, a, yeah. on an east-west migration. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the proposition work is done. It's tested incredibly well overseas in all of our core markets. Uh, and where we're at at the moment is just trying to bottom out uh, final options on names yeah. and again those are being tested overseas to make sure that they're working for overseas markets etc. Well, well that's terrific and moving on finally but by no means least the Lakelands proposition work is underway on that. Yeah I mean look, the, the Lakelands again from our perspective is, is a unique waterway, it's the longest waterway in the British Isles, it's got some unique areas of special conservation as well in terms of the callows and wetlands surrounding bog area etc and there's a fantastic heritage offering, particularly Christian heritage offering in there. So again when we go back to the work that we did in the market reviews uh, and we look at a couple of the core market segments that we're now targeting, this part of the world has an offering that's sure. capable of delivering for them. Uh, it doesn't have the biggest density of industry so we don't need to set the world on fire sure. here yeah. to actually deliver the kind of business that yeah. can sustain businesses you know, sure. right up through the Midlands etc. Sure. So you know, working with Waterways Ireland who are a key partner of ours mm -hmm. and the local authorities we're going to continue to develop that part of the world. There's two million in capital to be delivered in Loch Derg next year. Mm -hmm. We'll be working in terms of building that Christian heritage uh, offering uh, and working in terms of particularly driving a strong domestic marketing campaign mm -hmm. whilst simultaneously starting to dial up awareness yeah. uh, of the Lakelands with overseas media and overseas buyers. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. And, and of course, you mentioned something there in the two million capital. I mean, the great thing about these programs that you're working on, Paul, is that it's not taking the current success for granted. It's, you, you said it earlier in the interview mm. that unless you keep changing the product, unless you keep enhancing it, mm. uh, you eventually stagnate. Yeah. So, so how are we fixed on capital for these wonderful projects? Uh, government coming through with some of that? Yeah, well, look, we're working away at the moment as under the revised estimates process to make sure that we have the monies we need to do the job of work in 2015 for each of the programmes. Uh, we're pretty confident that we'll get a, a successful outcome on that. Uh, and more importantly, I suppose, the job of work uh, in 2015 where we're developing some master plans for each of these propositions as well so that we can start to inform the, the longer term capital sure. programme over the 2016 to 2020 period. But we're confident. Yes. that we'll have what we need to do the job in, uh, in the year ahead. Well that's terrific and I think all of us will be joining with you to get a meaningful capital programme put in place from 2016 to 2020 because as we all know investment in this industry delivers handsomely in terms of jobs. Great to see Fulcher Ireland with so many exciting projects for the future already well underway and uh, well done Paul and uh, thanks for all your great work. No, look, thanks, Eamon. And you know, with what's the conversation today has been about product development. Yeah. Uh, the real trick here, of course, is we're doing this because we want each of these four to become economic engines. Absolutely. So taking them, selling them, and making overseas consumers aware of them, that's the job of work that we in the agency has got to work on over the next couple of years. Excellent. Well done. Thanks, Eamon.